Everyone, please take your seats. The ceremony is about to begin. Will the class of 2021 please be seated and our distinguished guests on stage as well. 
Oh my goodness, yes, please applaud. <laughs> We're here, we did it, we made it. What a year, what an extraordinary 15 months, what a journey, um, but we've made it and we are here. And if my grin could get any bigger, I think, um, I don't know, it goes all the way to my ears. Normally, in regular times, this ceremony is a big deal. It's a time when we celebrate the accomplishments of these young, soon-to-be graduates. It's a real rite of passage for us as families and as friends as they enter young adulthood and greater independence and leave that journey of childhood behind. And we are proud of them, as we always are, um, entering this ceremony. Five members of this class Alejandro, Esteban, Andy, Cristobal, and Harris have gone the whole journey with us at Audi. And they came to us as what we call itty bitties. Um, that's our three-year-olds, and here they are graduating today. And in so many ways, they symbolize that journey from childhood that we've all done, right? Um, getting to this place, they've just done it with us. But equally, Jana arrived this year. Can you imagine joining this class, joining during these times? Um, and I, I take that as symbolism of the optimism, the future, the resilience, the ability to pivot, adapt, and change. We're proud of them all. This is a ceremony where we acknowledge your work, your sacrifice, the efforts you made to get here, and equally, we acknowledge the sacrifice of your families um, for making it possible for you to be here today. But obviously in these times, these are not normal times. We are doubly proud. We, our community, the world, has just moved through, is close to moving through, the first global pandemic in 100 years. We know that in this country, 600,000 people have died, and worldwide, and our reach is worldwide at Audi, 3.5 million people have died in this pandemic, including, of course, loved ones, folks connected to members of this community, this audience, and we are deeply sorry for your loss, as well as the struggle of the world. We all responded with courage, with commitment, with good humor, with creativity, with frustration, with digging deep for service. We did all of those things to move through this time. But I want to acknowledge, I do every year briefly, but today I want to acknowledge in more deep ways uh, the faculty that got these students here. Um, and I will speak to their parents as well, but oh my goodness gracious. These extraordinary teachers, um, in, the March, in March of 2020, pivoted to becoming online teachers. They came with great expertise in the classroom, and a few had real expertise teaching online, but most of us didn't. And they developed it, and they developed it quickly. And they developed it broadcast into your homes and living rooms so everyone could watch. Talk about courage. Um, somewhere along the line in your career to have your expertise challenged and, and moved in that way. The thing that I'm most grateful, though, for my, with my colleagues is they never wavered when it came to serving these students. They never hesitated. They never stopped their deep commitment. They stayed with you for your learning for your future, they never stopped. They put their own health at risk and walked into the classroom. They stood by you in every possible way, emotionally um, as well as academically. They never hesitated, they never paused. I've been crazy about this faculty for a lot of years, but never more than now. Thank you to my colleagues and friends, and if folks would care to join me in applause for them, I would be most grateful. But to our students, too, 
Um, I was just in the ladies' room practicing handshakes and fist bumps with some people for when I hand their diplomas out in a little bit. Your class was different um, than we've ever had or done before. And through all of that, you are extraordinarily to be commended. You also took care of your work, your learning, your future, but as much or more, you took care of each other. And I was so impressed um, by that and the way you did that. You took care of the big issues of our times and you didn't back off, whether it's environmental justice, social justice and equity, you took on the issues, the Rampage kept publishing, you kept taking stuff on um, as if almost it were normal when it was not at all. You sacrificed. Um, one member of your class, I asked, it was a student who did remote most of the year, and I asked your classmate, so how come you're doing remote? And the person said, nothing can happen to my family. I don't go out with my friends. I see my friends outdoors at a park, spaced apart, because I'm not bringing anything home to my family. This was obviously in the heat of the pandemic. But when a young person looks at me and says, I'm making this choice for my senior year, because nothing can happen to my family, um, you'll be forever in my heart, and I know we'll all be forever impressed by you. You played sports in masks. You played instruments in separate rooms and had your music patched together. You vaccinated when you got a chance for yourself and for our wider community. You owned this time. You were never a victim of it. You owned it and made it yours. And a lot of us who have a few more years under our belt than you know, those lessons come along in life. You've learned them early. You've risen to it. You got it, and it gives me all the more confidence in your future and your ability to adapt and pivot and seize the moment, come what may. So Ralph Waldo Emerson, I quote a lot. Ralph Waldo Emerson wrote, what lies behind you and what lies before you pale in comparison to what lies inside you. And I have never felt that more for any class. What's behind you? The journey of childhood to independence and young adulthood. What lies ahead of you? My goodness, the future is yours and there are zillions of places you will go and things you will do, including things you don't even imagine right now and we can't imagine for you. But what I know deeply about this class is that what lies inside you goes with you, and it's yours forever, and it is a blessing to the world that it is so. Since Hurricane Harvey, I have said to students, you know, no one can take your education. It's yours forever. No matter what happens in life, it's yours. I sure found myself this weekend thinking that no flood, no fire, no bad weather forecast like yesterday um, or today can take what's yours, what you own, what goes with you. And I hope you're feeling that as well. Thanks for the joy you brought to this. Um, another one of your classmates, right when we went back in the fall, I saw the student after a soccer game and she looked at me and said, Mrs. Darling, this is the best part of being back on campus. I didn't take that personally. I took it as the joy of playing soccer and was glad she felt that way. So I'm glad you head into this with laughter and with joy and celebration as well as commitment. So class of 2021, we did it. I'll forever be your fan. You'll forever be special to me and to the school. And we know there are fantastic things ahead for you because you've already shown us what lies behind you and what lies before you pales in comparison to what lies inside of you. You make us so very Audi proud. 
We'll go on and celebrate you through this ceremony, but first we will turn to three of your classmates who are performing for us today. Um, Lillian Sabolski, Dahlia Malawi, and Marcella Stones have a musical presentation under the direction of Mr. D. Please take it away. Beautiful, thank you. Thanks, Talia. So Audie has a tradition of two valedictorian speakers, each the top of their class, 
The first in our program is Philippe Debeau, who will speak as the top student in the French program. And Philippe, if you want to start, you make your way up. You're good to do that. It is my great pleasure to introduce this soon-to-be graduate. He has, as you might imagine, many academic accomplishments, including being a member of the National Honor Society, the French Honor Society, and the Science Honor Society. A natural leader, Philippe has been his class representative for three years. He's also been a pharaoh in our student ambassador program, which we appreciate very much at school. A member of the varsity swim team, Philippe volunteers extensively in Houston at several shelters and at the Houston Food Bank. We're really proud of him, and I know we're going to all enjoy hearing from him. Philippe Dubot. I thought the highlight of my year was to meet the president. But finally, being here in front of all of you seems much more humbling and challenging. Good morning, parents, teachers, school administrators, friends, mentors, and fellow graduates of the class of 2021. It is an honor to speak to you in the name of our class on the special occasion that is our graduation. Today is an important day for all of us the day that our class celebrates all its past achievements, and the day we finally take the first steps toward our own unique adventures. This year was my seventh year at Audi. I have had the pleasure of meeting many incredible people throughout the years that I now know well, or maybe even a little bit too well. <laughs> Some have been present since the beginning, and many have joined us along the years on this intrepid journey toward this special day. It's incredible to think about how much we all have grown and been marked by resilience over the years. I remember arriving at Audi in sixth grade, not knowing a word of English and lacking academic rigor in many subjects. Fortunately, everyone was very welcoming and I got the chance to learn a large diversity of skills from each and every person to become the best version of myself. If it wasn't for many of you, I wouldn't be standing here today. At times, the IB and the French baccalaureate might have taken the better of us. But in the end, we all know that our class faced much more challenging obstacles. First Harvey, then Imelda, a winter storm, and finally COVID-19. It still seems crazy to me to think that we lived part of our high school career in times of a global pandemic. When retrospecting on the last two years, our path has been marked by many pitfalls, curveballs, and junior and senior years were far from what anyone had ever envisioned. I still remember when we cluelessly thought online classes would be the best thing ever to happen and that they would only last for two weeks. <laughs> Even though Zoom meetings might have lacked interactions at times, both our teachers and us found creative ways to make classes enjoyable. I will never forget Mr. Bondu's ability to make a virtual chemistry lab as attractive as a World Cup soccer match, thanks to his amazing sports casting skills. Still, we had the priceless chance to have classes in person most of this year. And for that, I'd like to thank all of the cafeteria staff, corporal and maintenance staff, faculty, and school administrators who made that possible through their hard work. Online classes reminded us how social interactions at Audi are an integral part of what we learn every single day, and how desirable going to school could sometimes be. <laughs> Even though the last two years might have been the most difficult ones, they have been my personal favorites. The unprecedented times have given the opportunity for remarkable events to arise. How else would we have been able to build a fortified cardboard castle in our very own classroom? Teachers also doubled their efforts to accommodate their teaching to the different protocols. Mr. De Chistar's interpretation of art through a banana stuck on a wall will remain a reference for many years, as will the mortified look on his face when a student finally ate it as a snack a couple of days later. It also seems fair to congratulate our French and history geography teachers who never gave up on their motivation to teach us, despite our sometimes excessive creativity regarding verb conjugations and our questionable expertise in associating certain capitals with their respective countries. <laughs> Protocols might have felt cumbersome in many ways, but at the same time, they ensured our safety at the school and the ability for us to remain on campus all year long. Today, I am confident the famous two people per table and six feet apart will resonate in our heads for years to come. Aside from school, the endless game pigeon tournaments for which 
let's be honest, many of us could now qualify in world-class championships have kind of become part of our curriculum. Netflix has been of great help in keeping us company all these years, and the endless FaceTime calls until 2 a.m. have been prime contributors to our procrastination. I will not forget my several years as, as part of the swim team, nor the ringtones of my alarm that I had to change every year because of the anxiety it provoked when waking up at 4.30 in the morning to jump into the cold. Some of my greatest laughs have also been with the French theater group, in which I love to perform both at Audi and at the Dallas International Theater Festival. In the end, adapting to a new learning environment served as a testimony of our ability to take on new challenges, including Mr. Barbazo's terrific internet connection. Even though high school might not have been what we originally expected, the obstacles and trials that we faced have shaped the infinite perseverance and ingenuity of the next generation of doctors, political leaders, scientists, economists, teachers, and much more. To choose the Galles par ailleurs, our success wouldn't have been possible without the help of the faculty, who sparked our intellectual curiosity on a daily basis and pushed the boundaries of our minds. Thanks to their hard work, recommendation letters, and the help of our college counselors who supported us in these past years, we are all bound to do amazing things in the future. On behalf of all of us, I would also like to thank our parents, families, and closest friends who have always encouraged us to pursue our goals and taught us never to give up. Even though we might be scattered across the world next year, we take on with us long-lasting memories from our time at Audi, which I am sure will keep us united despite the distance. I tried to find the right words to finish this speech, but couldn't match the strength of Amanda Gorman's. For there is always light if only we are brave enough to see it, if only we are brave enough to be it. Thank you. Thank you. Could you stay just one minute? Thank you, Philippe. Let's give him another round of applause. Awesome. And now we invite to the stage our second valedictorian from the international program. I saw, there we are, Georgios Mikos um, <laughs> comes to the stage. Let me tell you a little about Georgios, except that he has a cheer, in addition that he has a cheering squad. He has been the Vice President of the Science National Honor Society and Co-Vice President of Student Council. He's been co-captain of the Ethics Bowl and an active member of the speech and debate team. He's a national merit finalist. He has even co-authored and published two abstracts at the meeting of the American Society for Gene and Cell Therapy. Perhaps one of Georgios's most lasting legacies at Audi will be, though, um, a couple of years ago, we had a design charrette where we brought students, parents, teachers, board members, faculty members together and planned for our campus center. I've never told you this, but when we left that session, all the trustees said, do what Giorgio said. So we're about to build a very fine campus center, thank to you, thanks to you. Please welcome Giorgio Smikos to the stage. Thank you, Ms. Darling, for that wonderful introduction. Good morning, everyone. Congratulations again to us in the class of 2021 for making it to this day, a day that represents both our accomplishments in the past and the exciting horizons just in front of us. We are all here today because of the many people who have supported us. We owe a big thank you to our parents and families for watching over us all these years, for guiding and encouraging us, for sometimes prodding us, but for always nourishing our dreams. To my parents, my sister Mary, and my family in Greece, Sasaka Popoli. Equally, we owe a debt of gratitude to our teachers for their commitment to each and every one of us. Audi has an amazing group of dedicated teachers who go beyond the prescribed curriculum and teach from the heart. They hold a high standard for us to attain to, they inspire us, and they make Audi the school it is today. And finally, to our entire community, Thank you for your role in shaping the incredible Audi experience and for your tenacity when the pandemic derailed practically everything. Shortly, we will all receive our diplomas. Even though this diploma in name signifies the completion of certain requirements, let's focus instead on the ethos we developed through this process. When I first came to Audi four years ago, I viewed everything as a checkbox. 
seeking to complete my assignments as fast as possible just for the sake of completing them. However, slowly, with the help of my teachers, I started to understand that the binary of done, not done, obscured the beauty of learning. Now, my philosophic wisdom only extends so far, so luckily, I can rely on the wisdom of my Greek ancestors. The philosopher at Beaker disclaimed, only those who possess education are free. Indeed, since he was born a slave and gained his education by developing as a philosopher, this statement carried literal meaning for him. But for us as well, education provides the means to liberate our mind from the extreme polarization, sensationalism, and prejudices that infiltrate our society. With educational capital, our horizons expand, and we can tackle both the ethical and technical issues around us to improve the world for future generations. I sincerely believe our education at Audi has provided us with the first critical step on this path. I repeat again, we were very lucky to learn from excellent teachers with genuine passion who challenged us and encouraged us to grow in the full breadth of our personhood. This year, despite the cancellation of many events that generally underscore the social experience at Audi, we learned how to build community by sharing simpler interactions. Despite being relegated to the rectangles of Zoom, we still managed to learn and even benefited from the remote setting. You know, why tell your teacher a printer isn't working when you can claim that the entire Wi-Fi is down? <laughs> but in all seriousness, this year our class achieved great things. We realized that putting our life on hold was not an option, so we endeavored to continue. Following the steady leadership of our school and thanks to the hard work of teachers, we adapted. Looking back, it's hard to believe how we got through it all. I don't clearly remember how I completed each component of my college applications or my internal assessments, and now, suddenly, here we are, decked out in these robes, ready to receive our diplomas. However, it was not magic that got us here. Even if we don't remember how it happened, we were the agents of our own destiny in the sense that it was each of us who completed everything, each of us who evolved, and each of us who displayed the resilience needed to meet the challenge of our circumstance. Trust in yourself, bet on yourself, and remember, since you've done it all once, you can do it again. To end with one final thought, I want to acknowledge that for myself, and I'm guessing for many of you too, the events of this year only exacerbated the challenges already inherent to the senior year. Nobody, especially this year, enjoyed completing long assignments or preparing for exams. If you did, please let me know your secret. <laughs> Yet, we all grew through this process. As Greek philosopher Aristotle said, the root of education is bitter, but the fruit is sweet. We tasted that root this year, not only in our schoolwork, but also in the loss of many of the social aspects of our education. Yet, having tasted it, we are now ready to embark on our next adventure, wiser than before, more flexible than before, more empathetic than before, and most importantly, ready to make a positive impact in the lives of others. Thank you so much and good luck to us all. It's been an honor to address you today. Thank you, Georgios. Okay, you've heard from me. You've heard more importantly from classmates. And now we have the great honor and privilege of hearing from our commencement speaker, Ms. Mia Menz. Ms. Menz's bio is in your program. Um, I won't read it all to you, but I will share a few important highlights as we welcome her to the podium. She is the Global Chief Diversity and Inclusion Officer and CEO for Impact Ventures for Sodexo. There, she's responsible for leveraging diversity and inclusion as a key business differentiator worldwide, as is happening in so many of our corporations, I know. She mentors passionately. She serves on nonprofit and for-profit boards she works to make a difference in so many ways in the world. I had the privilege of hearing her speak on Zoom at a Greater Houston Partnership event where she shared her inspirational story. That happens when we're in the pack sometimes too. Um, where she shared her inspirational story of her own international growing up and experience, her own and professional journey, her own multilingualism. I know she's going to inspire us today. Please give a very warm, audi welcome to Ms. Mia Menz.
Wow, good morning. I was in tears just walking. This is, you can't see what I can see, but this is such an amazing sight, all that this represents. So first, I'm just th so thrilled to be here. So thrilled to be here. This is a milestone in more ways than one. One, we're out, <laughs> which is incredible. I think it, it, it feels like a new beginning, um, a new season, a rebirth, a renewal. It's also about you and all that you have accomplished. So I want to start with just a hearty, heartfelt congratulations because this day is about your hard work, your grit and perseverance. It's about all the things that are ahead, exciting things to come. And so I could not be more proud and honored to share this day with you and to be able to offer a few words. I want to thank Lisa and Darcy, who's out there somewhere, for inviting me to be here today. I also have my own pod. I'm thrilled to have my mom here in the back, and also um, my best friend Kelly and her two girls. And I want to convey two truths about their presence here today. Um, first, let me just say that my mom's going to hear what I'm going to say, and she's going to first say that I did well, and then she's going to tell me all the things that I could have said and done better. And, and my best friend Kelly is going to, even if I mess up, she's going to say that I was amazing. But here are the two truths about their presence here. It doesn't matter how old you get, how grown you are, you will always want your mom and dad on the days that it matters. You will always want your mom and dad. My best friend Kelly and I have known each other since um, ninth grade, since we were 14. And so the other truth is that the friendships that you are formed here will be enduring. And in 30 years, you can look back and have a shared history with some of your friends. It is a beautiful, beautiful thing. It's a gift. So enjoy these special moments and enjoy the friendships that you have formed. So I'm going to start by telling you a little bit about myself. Storytelling, if you will. I love the power of storytelling, one, because it, 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 it connects us. Behind every face and every name here is a life, is a journey, is a story that makes us all distinct and all very special. And I've always believed that if you tap into those differences and commonalities, it makes for deep human connections and it makes the spaces that we occupy so enriching. So I hope that over the time that you've known each other, you've gotten appreciation for deep human stories and deep human connections. So my story. I came to this country when I was eight years old as an immigrant, as many of us are, from the country of Ghana. The stole that I'm wearing that my mom insisted I wear is from Ghana. The vibrant colors, I think, give you a sense for the vibrancy of our culture and our people. But I left there when I was eight with my parents and my two sisters in the midst of a coup d'etat in my country, incredible turmoil. My parents and sisters and I came with nothing more than the things in our suitcase, but my parents had the conviction that this world that we call America would provide access and opportunity. They gave up their own prospects so that their children could have a better life. And what they always told us was one, that we should always work hard, never compromise our integrity, um, to see the boundless possibilities, possibilities in life. My parents also reinforced for us that the things that we spend our time and our energy in should be oriented around making the world just a little bit better. And I have always internalized those important lessons. So um, education was important. They impressed upon us the importance of studying hard um, and then using those lessons to make the world a better place. I, uh, I didn't get to go to Audi, but I am the product of really great public school education. I went to T.H. Rogers Middle School, and then I went to Bel Air High School I went on to Wellesley College, um, an all-women's college in, in the Boston area, and then Harvard Business School, which for any immigrant family is the quintessential, quintessential dream come true. And I will never forget what it felt like to pick up the phone and tell my mom and dad that I got in. Um, Wellesley College, for me, made me feel fearless. I left Wellesley, particularly at that impressionable moment in my life, an all-girls school, feeling like there was nothing I could not do. Everything felt accessible when I went to Wellesley. I think Harvard Business School, though, gave me the confidence that I had the skills and the education 
um, to do the hard work. So certainly while my parents taught me to be brave and principled, um, I think it was those educational experiences and also my early career experiences that taught me to take risk. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about taking risk. The first thing that I'll say is that this impulse to step out of my comfort zone, to do the things that are really hard is not because I'm fearless, although I thought I was fearless leaving, leaving Wellesley. I think that what I've learned to do, um, because at many moments in my life, I have felt fear and anxiety and self-doubt, but what I've learned to do in those moments is to walk into the fear, sometimes um, as, a, as just a, a gut feel, but often because intellectually I know that leaning into the hard, um, doing the things that feel uncomfortable are the, is actually what promotes growth. Um, so certainly the education and my career experiences have enabled all of that, but I will tell you that the most transformative career experiences have happened when I was willing to take that risk. In 20 years of working, I have um, done amazing jobs. I worked for four companies over 20 years, and I've, I've done amazing jobs, jobs that I've loved and that have emboldened me. I've also done jobs that I have not liked and that have diminished me in moments. And I will say that it's important to also lean into the, those hard jobs because it is the thing that, that builds both technical and emotional resilience. So lean into the hard. Um, so I've done, I've done the hard jobs. But when I found Sodexo, it's been nine years now, when I found Sodexo, I was so determined to work for this French company that I only knew really from their public image. Um, I knew that they were a global company. They had this incredible mission that I believed in around quality of life. I knew that they were a people company by the way they talked about the human experience. I knew they were committed to diversity, equity, and, and inclusion. And I knew that they understood their role as a corporate citizen, their role in operating in communities to make communities better. And so on many levels, I just had this gut instinct that whatever happened, this is a company that I could grow, it, grow with and be great in because I could be myself. There was a, alignment in values. But when the opportunity finally came to work with Sodexo, and it came after the second time, because I didn't get the job the first time, it was to lead sales in Latin America. Um, the job was in Sao Paulo, um, leading sales across eight countries. So I'm gonna just lay this out for you. I'd never run a sales organization. I was new to the industry. I was new to the company. I was expected to do uh, business in local language, which was Spanish and Portuguese, and I spoke neither language. But somehow, my husband and I thought that it was a great idea. And so we packed up our house, moved with our two small children to Sao Paulo, Brazil. It was transformative, hard on so many levels. When I arrived in Latin America, in South America, I was one of two women at the executive level. I was one of a handful of blacks in the region, in a region of about 2,500. I was the only American <laughs> and the only non-native language speaker. And I call that out because when you are in new environments, I think it's important to just contemplate for a minute what it might feel like and the alienation of being in a space where you cannot do the most basic, speak the language. That has sensitized me in so many ways. Uh, my husband and I also had to deal with the stigma uh, of the fact that he left his job, a great job in the US, to support me and my endeavors. Um, so I was the working woman, he was his trailing spouse. And if there's a footnote in that, it's that as you think about your partners in life, the people you wanna build a life with, it's important that there is values alignment and this notion of shared success because I could not be where I am today if my husband did not take pride in my success and that we didn't think about collectively the good for our family when we make, family, when we make this um, work decision. So that's the footnote. Brazil, as I mentioned, was hard on many levels, but my boss at the time had the conviction that the lessons that I would learn and the lessons that I might teach my colleagues would make us all more aware, more conscientious, and would lead to deeper understanding. And he was right. At the end of three years, and it was a long three years, I did learn to speak Spanish and Portuguese. 
I did learn to run a sales organization. I was stretched in just new and profound ways. Um, and I felt so in tune to this notion of being an other, what it feels like to be an other in a, in a, in a heightened way. I also um, was so grateful for the opportunity to immerse myself in a deep cultural experience that I would not have not gone anywhere else. I came back to the US and I was appointed CEO of a business division, so I got a P&L role. That led to an acquisition, so I got to help the company do an acquisition. And in the time since, I have held many jobs in many functions from strategy to competition, competitive intelligence, corporate social responsibility, marketing, sales, product. So in my nine years at Sodexo, I've, heard, I've had five different titles and nine different jobs. Um, and so that has forced me to step out of my comfort zone. I've taken jobs before I thought I was ready, but ultimately I've been willing to lean into the heart and discomfort. I, um, I've learned a lot from all those jobs and all those lessons, but I will say that in spite of the success that I've achieved, I still today feel the weariness or the heaviness of having to navigate my gender and my race in corporate settings and in the world in general. And it is a sign of the times that we live in. It is a fact. And I have learned to use my voice, my seat at the table, um, to see it as a privilege and to use it to fight inequity of all forms. When I'm at the table, what's in my mind is how can we create more inclusive spaces? And that has been very, very important in my work. But in my home, I am also very committed to creating a better future for my children who deserve it in spite of the color of their skin. And so this is very, this work is very personal to me um, as I think about the kind of world I wanna leave behind for my kids and my grandkids. So it is in the spirit of motherhood that I leave you with these, these lessons learned, if you will, that I have, I have learned across um, across my life journey and that I try to impart to my own children. The first is this notion of learning agility. The world is changing, the world is dynamic, and I have learned that it is okay to learn how to do the things that you do not know how to do. So it's not about going into every situation with the answers, but it's have, knowing how to ask the questions and again, leaning into the difficult rolling up your sleeves and figuring it out. Learning agility is about continuous improvement in many ways. It's about walking into a space and knowing that you are there to make it better and using your intelligence and your wit to make it better. That is learning agility. The other one is taking risks. I have said over and over again that the best life experiences have happened because I've been willing to step out of my comfort zone you will open up a plethora of new opportunities if you are willing to take some risk. And I have done that my entire life, my entire career. And what you find is when you take risk, your threshold for risk gets higher. I cannot imagine that I would have taken that leap, gone to Brazil, started over, if I had not had this ability to take risk. With that said, I also ask you to learn how to submit to change. As I mentioned, we live in a volatile, uncertain world, and change is constant. I also say to repel change is human. So I stop saying embrace change, embrace change, embrace change. Change is hard. So I say submit to the change, which is just being still with the heart around you and knowing that the pain of any journey, the heart of any journey, is what produces great joy. So that leads me to perseverance and grit, which you all must know in spades, particularly after the last year. Perseverance and grit is embracing the all too human path of derailments and setbacks and challenges. That's what makes life messy and complicated and oh so rich. So I say to you, it's okay to, um, it's okay to know, walk into a situation knowing it's hard as long as you're willing to do the hard work. And there is truth to the saying, there's truth to the saying that there is no progress without struggle. So keep that in mind as well. Next, personal character. 
I've always wondered why Sodexo took a chance on me. Um, sure, I, 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 had, I had proven, I had a good track record of performance, but I had none of the prerequisite skills for the job they put me in. And I have decided that it was all about personal character. Personal character is your willingness to reveal who you are, warts and all. So it is being trustworthy, having high integrity, having good work ethic, being honest, even in the most difficult situations, being vulnerable. That is personal character. So you should always invest in your skills. You should always invest in your skills and technical capability. But I submit to you that investing in your personal character is what distinguishes you. So invest in your personal character. And then the last one is allyship. And this was actually the only thing I wrote down because I didn't want to get this definition wrong. Allyship is the practice of emphasizing social justice, inclusion, and human rights by members of an in-group to advance the interest of an oppressed or marginalized out-group. I've tried to practice allyship my entire career. You all, you're going out into the world and you're going to do great things. There's no question about that. You've been well-educated, you've been well-equipped, you've been well-trained. And so the, the opportunity that you have now, what makes you a good human, what makes you a good leader, is the ability to see injustice, to name injustice, and to stand in defense of others. That is the power that you wield as you go out into the world. I'm going to try to wind it down now, um, as I've imparted, I hope, six important lessons to you. But I hope that what you see, the underlying theme, is that we all have in us the ability, the power to transform society and communities for the better. I've always seen business, law, if you will, science, technology, education, plug it in. I've seen it as a as a platform to do good. Business is a platform to do good. And what that means for me is that economic progress and human progress can and should converge for the betterment of society. That is what I have learned. And I have internalized that as I've cultivated my own brand of leadership. My brand of leadership, I hope, is anchored in my humanity. And that means that I choose to be kind, I choose to be compassionate, and I choose to be vulnerable sometimes, because what you will learn is that leadership is ultimately about service. In becoming a leader, you cultivate a servant's heart, and you recognize early that leadership is about service to mission and service to people. And that is universal. It doesn't matter what field you're in. Leadership is about service to people and service to mission. I've come to know an incredible nonprofit called Second Day. And what they say is that there are two important days in your life, you might have heard this, the day that you're born and the day you find out why. So let your why, let your why be your rallying cry. Let it be the thing that motivates you every single day. Because if you tap into that, if you tap into your why, if it becomes your source of motivation, it takes you through the hardest days and the longest nights. It takes you through the, the longest days and the hardest nights. And what it will do for you long term is make the work you do more enduring and more satisfying. I promise you, I am the living, working, working breathing example of that. So I'm going to end by wishing you all the very, very best. You have done it. Now do something with it. Do something with it, with it. And you took my Amanda Gorman speech so quote, so I'm going to say something else to you about, because um, I do love that quote very much. I'll say something else to you, which is from Gandhi. It's simply, be great, but be the change you want to see in the world. Congratulations to each and every one of you, class of 2021. Thank you for having me here today.
Wow, um, I knew you would inspire us. I am grateful for the ways you did. I know this class is gonna live up to your expectations. So a leader from the class who embodies the values you were speaking of, Max Lasko, our student council president, um, would love to offer a gift and a word of thanks. Thank you so much, Ms. Menz, for being here with us and the amazing advice that really resonated, so inspirational, and your story is so similar to all of ours, and I know it's going to come very key for us as we embark on our next adventure, so I just really wanted to share um, a big thanks on behalf of the class of 2021 and the rest of Audi and a gift. So thank, thank you, you so much, Miss Men, thank for you. being here. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you both. <sighs> Goodness gracious. Um, we have granted a number of awards as we do for each class each year for citizenship and scholarship and service. We hold four special awards to grant at, during commencement, and we will do so now this morning. Monsieur Pouget, the deputy head of school and our provisor, will offer the community service award at this time. Monsieur Pouget. Good morning, class of 2021. Through our leadership and commitment, this year's winner of the EPPA Community Service Award has rendered extraordinary service. As the president of the Environmental Club, she contributed to making Audi and her community a greener place by planting trees at Memorial Park and volunteering at Buffalo Bayou. In her role as a pharaoh in the Student Ambassador Program, she assisted the admissions office and offer the friendly face to our new students, helping them assimilate to our school. As a member of One Sky Club, she put forth notable effort to raise funds to sponsor needy children abroad. Her commitment to serve and encourage other students to engage and to give selflessly of their time to make the world a better place. It is my pleasure to announce this year's PPA Community Service Award winner is Samantha Francis. Thank you. Mr. Sam Waugh, the head of our upper school, will present the Kathleen Audie um, Award, named for, obviously, our founder, Mrs. K. Audie. He knew her personally. It's so appropriate that he's granting this award. Mr. Waugh, please. Good morning, everybody. It's great to see you out here. Uh, instituted for the class of 2000, the K. Audi Award filled a gap in the honors that we traditionally present at graduation each year. Named for the school's founder, as um, you just heard, it's the one award decided upon by the graduates themselves. The criteria is straightforward. We simply ask the students to recognize the one member of the class whom they hold in highest esteem. We do not attempt to define esteem as it's a personal appreciation and emanates from a multitude of sources, an individual's character, achievements in various fields, leadership, charisma, but ultimately it boils down to one word, respect. Whom do you most respect? This year's honoree clearly reflects all of the categories I listed above. He's accomplished academically, athletically, and in community involvement. He has distinguished himself with his creative responses to the challenges of COVID, where he has demonstrated an unfailingly positive attitude. 
thereby constructing a constructive tone for our entire community. It is indeed a profound and humbling honor to learn that one's peers, specifically isolated from the opinion of adults, hold one in highest esteem. Last spring, the student body elected this individual their school president, and this spring his classmates chose him for this singular recognition. It is my privilege on behalf of the class of 2021 and the entire Audi community to present this year's K Audi Award to Max Lasco. Thank you, Max. Congratulations. What an honor from your peers. I was waving to your parents up there in the back row. <laughs> yeah. um, these students, by the way, as Max returns to his seat, I will tell you the members of this class are doing extraordinary things next year. There are students doing gap years. There are students going to an amazing array, array of universities, small, large, liberal arts, technical, uh, private, public, scientific, arts. Uh, it's all happening in this class. Um, Max is the only member of this class headed to a service academy. He's headed to the Air Force Academy. He's the third generation in his family to do so. Um, so he carries that distinction as well. We thank you in advance for that next bit of service, Max. The other little known thing, and Mr. Wall did a great presentation uh, accurately of the word, but he didn't tell you all how many times Max took on the administration this year. He was really nice about it, but whew, um, he, yeah, wrote me some of the tougher emails I got. Always polite, but um, anyway, lobbying for things for you and for the class. So it is my honor to grant the Head of Schools Award each year, and that moment has come um, for the class of 2021. This award is for a student with high academic standing, but who equally makes a high contribution to the life of the school. This is especially, it's fun to award every single year, but it's especially fun for me this year because I was scared of this student in ninth grade. He had a drone. I wasn't sure he could fly it. So I worried a lot. Is that drone coming down on my head? No, it never did. In fact, great things happened when this year's recipient um, used his piloting skills and his cinematography skills for so many events at school. He helped with traditions we couldn't do in person, such as tree lighting, international festivals flag parade, the sports banquet, he created videos for our advancement team and others. He's a member of the National Honor Society and as the science and technology editor for the Rampage, he shares his passion and knowledge of those fields with us. Speaking of fields, he was named all SPC conference in both cross country and track and is the only athlete in Audi's history to run five kilometers in under 16 minutes. This fall, he'll attend the University of Washington in St. Louis. They are lucky to get him. Um, it is doubly fun again for me, um, he, where I'm sure he will be on the cross country team. Um, doubly fun for me to invite Alexander Gadden to the stage. I don't know what we do without him. I think we have to put him on staff for next year. Um, Alex is, um, in addition, a, an unusual um, person at Audi in that he is the child of an alum. That does not also often happen for us, so we're proud of his family through a second generation. 
Our next award, the Parents Association Citizenship Award, will be given by Mrs. Joanne Gatto. She is the president of the Parents Association and she's a member of our board of trustees. She's the parent of two much younger Audi students who one day will be sitting where you are, Mrs. Gatto. Good morning. The APPA Citizenship Award is Audi's oldest and most prestigious honor. The award recognizes one member from the international program and one member from the French program who best exemplify the qualities we treasure at Audi integrity, empathy, community involvement, and engagement. These ideal Audi citizens demonstrate a respectful and constructive attitude at all times. And it is my pleasure to honor this year's recipient, recipients. The French program's APPA Citizenship Award recipient is a young man dedicated to the environment. And as the environment coordinator for Student Council, he has implemented many initiatives in making Audi a greener and more sustainable place. Not even COVID could slow down his sustainability initiatives, turning his backyard into a garden, sharing the fruits and vegetables of his labor with his neighborhood. His engagement continues as a pharaoh in the student ambassador program coaching young tennis players. Oh, and he is also the president of the Aerospace Club. Please join me in congratulating Romain Roussel. Congratulations. This year's International Programs APP, APPA Citizenship Award recipient came to us in pre-K-3, and he is truly the embodiment of the Audi spirit. As a pharaoh in the Student Ambassador Program, he has welcomed many of our new families and students with his smiling face and friendly demeanor. His participation in Student Council in a variety of roles have been invaluable, especially these last two years. Academically, he was named top IB psychology student in the 11th grade, as well as a National Merit Scholar Commended Student and Latin Scholar Award recipient. Please join me in congratulating Alejandro Ayala. Thank you, Ms. Gatto. All right, the moment we've all come for, the big award for everyone, an Audi International School Diploma. Let's begin that process right now, Mr. Lyons, Mr. Slode. Mr. With Mr. Boyser's help, we will begin to grant these diplomas. Mrs. Stone and others have done a great deal of work to have us at this point. I am sorry, with a class, there you go. Your rows are going. Mr. Wah, Monsieur Pouget, would you care to stand and um, greet students as they go by? In pre-COVID times, we'd be shaking hands and hugging. Um, those of you who've been with us in previous graduations know that. Instead, you may see some creative elbow bumps. I don't know, we'll see what unfolds, but we know we're gonna give diplomas to each of these extraordinary young people. Here we go. Ms. Menz, I hope will help too. And Mr. Mohammed, who is the vice chair of our board of trustees um, and our board chair elect is um, serving in this role and honor this afternoon, this morning as well. Here we go.
We begin with Ellison Mackenzie Abel. Adam Abu El Noor. Maria Victoria Acosta Rondon. Sara Afshar Karjan. Ayman Osama Elkanezi. Ahmad Ali Al Maktari. Aya Alamadin. Lily Alamshinas. Hey, Zara Amjad. Estelle Stéphanie Archambault. Kevin Atia. Alejandro Ayala. Esteban Ayala. Romain Barbo Ram Krishna Bikina. Amedi Bourreli. (laughs) 
Valeria Castro. Nolan E. Kozer. Henderson Wang Chandler. Colette Christian Chen. <laughs> Mia Condado Duque. Vaughn Olivia Corson. <laughs> Madeline Christine Cox. Madeline Anna Elise Crane. <laughs> Peter S. Cuthbert. Allison Sibulski. <laughs> Lillian Sibulski. Camilla M. Dasprez. <laughs> Alexandra G. Dobe. Rémi d'Autriche. <laughs> Cynthia Deem.
Mariana Dema. Moritz Amadeus Duman. Andy Decan. Philippe Debo. Joel Dene de Paulo. Aiden Jeffrey Donahue. Nicole Elizabeth Dunkel. Charlotte Durham. Kiran Farouk Esani. Adam Christopher Gordon Fields. Samantha Gabrielle Francis. Thomas Frichet. Alexander J. Gadden. Erica Patricia Gaillard. Sarah Noor Glogner. (laughs) 
Mayo Guillaume. Therese Caressi Harmon. Karen Judith Hernandez. Jana Ariel Hilliard. Rick Huang. Ethel Jakubovic. <laughs> Brian Cars. Navrina Carr. <laughs> Seth Azem Khan. We're ready for the next row, folks. Come on up. Nathan Kralik. All right, they're getting set. Hang on. He gets two applauses. One more time, Nathan Kralik. <laughs> Ta
Mahir Rajendra Kumeshi. Banu Manjari Kuri. Max Walker Lasco. Artus Lavo <laughs> Angelina Sophia Shen Lee. Miles J. Lewis. <laughs> Catherine Ruby Lugo. Kaya Rebecca Luik. <laughs> Dongyan Ma. Saskia Marutex <laughs> Uen Moje. Dahlia Malawi. <laughs> Oliver Isaac McEwen Debney. Georgios Mikos. <laughs> Mary Mikos.
Gemma M. Morgan. Kaylin S. Nair. Hannah Noe. Hortense Agathe Elise Peloton. Katia Wen Petrosky. Katina Alexandra Proestakis Ortiz. Cristobal N. Ramirez. Faisal Abdusami Razak. <laughs> Cécile Sophie Robert. Lucia Rosa. Autumn Ross. Noah Rousseau. <laughs> Romain S. Roussel. Lara M. Roy. <laughs> Woo! 
Harris Olivia Salek. Om Satupathi. Jeanne Emma Aude Sauvé. Sonom Hanna Sharufkana. Jean-Luc Naoto Shimizu. <laughs> Dylan S. Stefkin. Marcella Mi Viola Stones. <laughs> Holden Thomas Stoos. Adian Hassan said. <laughs> Margot Thomas. Denise Toxos. <laughs> Ermac Toxos. Maria Trinka Vespan. <laughs> Ziana Ukani. Mira Vashisht. <laughs> 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 
Lauren Mackenzie Wade. Josephine Maria Watkins. <laughs> Augustus Amund Wellner. Jaden Wu. Vivian Lily Wu. Shinghai Yang. <laughs> Emily L. Yao. Eleni Zabane. <laughs> Didi Joe. Guests on the stage may be seated. Thank you for helping with giving out diplomas. Mr. Boyshire, thank you for the hardest job in schools, reading everyone's name well and accurately. We will gather again soon, some of us, June 15th, when Bach results arrive. We'll celebrate our French program terminal yet again. But for today, I'm giving Dee Dee time here. <laughs> Dee Dee took me to the zoo when she was in eighth grade to see meerkats. I mean, how fabulous is that? Okay. Will the class of 2021 please rise? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I am proud to introduce to you Audie International School's latest alumni. Please congratulate the class of 2021.
picture would be normal, no? Twelve months from now. Well done. Well done. Yeah. Well done, everyone. It was great. It was beautiful. It went well. And none of the flags on the stage fell. Yeah. Not even flags. I love it. It means that things are going very well. <laughs> them know that there's no formal recession because it looks like they're waiting. <laughs> no one's moving. <laughs> they're probably waiting for their kids. Yeah. 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 Okay. Thank you. Okay, they're moving. We're good. Yeah. They're getting it. It's moving slowly. It's very slowly, but, but it's uh, moving. 